So basketball is back in season today and we finally get to see the sport played at the highest level. So in today's video, I wanted to go over a mathematics basketball video. Now this is pretty advanced, but if you follow my explanation, I'm sure you'll understand. Stay tuned. All right, so in today's video, we're going to answer two questions about shooting the perfect jump shot. So let's dive into it. Question number one. All right, question number one says, the perfect jump shot occurs when the ball enters the basket at an angle of 45 degrees. LV is six feet tall and attempts to shoot the perfect three point shot from 24 feet by elevating and releasing the ball at a height of eight feet. If the basket is 10 feet tall, which of the following equations describes the trajectory of LV's jump shot. LV's shooting position is X equals zero and he makes the jump shot. Okay, so I think this is a pretty good question. First of all, let's make sure that we understand it. What's happening here? LV, he's 24 feet from the basket. 24 feet, that's standard three point shot in the NBA, right? So 24 feet, he elevates, he, he shoots the ball and he releases the ball when his hands is eight feet off the ground. And he releases the ball, the ball should go up in the air and he wants the ball to end up diving into the basket, which is 24 feet away from him. And the basket hoop is also 10 feet tall, right? So now we're being asked about the trajectory of his jump shot. The trajectory, that might, see, that might look like a fancy word, but all trajectory means is the shape of the curve that the basketball follows when it leaves your hands and go and travel towards the hoop. So it's just the path that the ball follows. That's the trajectory. Now we all know from experience, what the trajectory is, right? If whether you've thrown anything, whether you've thrown a football or thrown a basketball, the path is what? It goes up, it goes up smoothly, and then it reaches a maximum height, and then it starts to climb back down. So it's like a, it's like an upside down bowl shape. Now LV, he doesn't want the ball to just take any type of trajectory. He wants the ball to take a specific trajectory. What is that trajectory? Well, he wants he wants to shoot the ball so that when the ball dives into the basket the ball dives in at 45 degrees because 45 degrees is halfway between zero degrees and 90 degrees, right? So the zero degrees is flat. You don't want, you don't want the ball to dive into the basket at zero degrees because that's going to be a flat shot, right? Flat shots are terrible. When you get tired and you don't get enough lift in your jump shot, you end up shooting flat shots. So you don't want to shoot a flat shot. At the same time, you don't want to shoot a rainbow either because a rainbow goes high and then it comes into the basket straight down. You don't want uh, the ball to dive into the basket straight down because if the ball is off centered, it's easy to bounce off the rim and bounce out of the basket. A rainbow shot is pretty to look at, but they're not very consistent. You wanna settle for halfway between zero and 90. You want your ball to dive in at 45 degrees, which is not, which is not flat and it's not a rainbow. So 45 degrees is right between, right? So you want your ball to dive in at an angle like this. If you can get the ball to dive in at, at a 45 degree, we consider that to be a perfect shot. LV took the shot and the trajectory that the ball took for his jump shot is one of these equations. We're being asked to find out which equation. We're being told that he made the shot. So if he made the shot, which one of these equations is the right answer? So to figure that out, let's go ahead and analyze a jump shot. So when you take a jump shot, the ball follows an upside down U shape, right? A bowl shape. It goes up like it's climbing up a hill. It reaches its highest peak and then it comes down and dives into the, into the basket. What is this shape called? This shape is called a parabola. A parabola is a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is just a second degree polynomial. A quadratic equation is an equation that has different powers of X with the highest power of X being two. So an X squared. When we write out the general equation for a parabola, we get a, which is just a number times x squared, plus b, which is just a number times x, plus some constant c. So the general equation for a parabola has three unknowns, a, b, and c. So we want to solve for a, b, and c, given the information that we have. We only have two pieces of information. We're being told that he shot the jump shot from a position of x equals zero, and his release height was, zero, was eight feet. So that means that the ball was located at a position of zero eight. Okay, what else do we know? We also know that he made the shot and we're being told that the, that the basket is 24 feet away and 10 feet high. So what coordinate does that correspond to? Well, that corresponds to an X value of 24 and a Y value of 10, right? 24 feet distance, 10 feet high. 
So that's another point that needs to be on the curve. So we have two points on the curve. We're not given any other point on the curve. So there's one piece of information that's missing, you know? So what piece of information is missing? Well, they could give us another point on the curve or they could tell us the angle at which you release the shot. Now, another thing to remember about a parabola, a parabola typically has a bowl shape, but it can also have an upside down bowl shape, such as the trajectory of a basketball when you shoot it, right? Because the basketball goes up, then it goes down. A bowl starts high on the side, then it goes down, it dips, and then it goes back up. That's a bowl shape, right? Now, when you have a bowl shape, the x squared coefficient is a positive number. It has an up curvature. If it has a down curvature, which means that it goes up and then, it, and then it dips down. So it starts low, goes up, then goes down. Like a basketball, when you shoot it, that's an upside down parabola. And if it's an upside down parabola, it has a downward curvature. And if it has a downward curvature, the x squared coefficient is going to be negative. So that's a big clue that we could use to eliminate two of the wrong answers. Because two of the answer choices have positive x squared coefficients. Answer choice A has positive 4.32 and answer choice D has positive 0.0784. So those two are automatically wrong. The parabola is going to have a downward curvature, not an upward curvature. Okay, so we eliminate A and D and we narrow our answer choices down to B and C. Okay, so let's start with answer choice B. So answer choice B is y equals negative 2.742 x squared plus 3.358 x plus 8. Okay, and now we know that, and we know that the parabola that we're looking for needs to have two points on its trajectory. The point 0, 08, which is where he released the jump shot, right? That's, that's the starting point. And the point 2410, which is where the ball goes into the rim. So those two points have to be on the parabola. Okay, so let's see if those two points are on this parabola. So let's plug in the point 0, 08. If we plug in 0 in for x and solve for y, we get 8. Perfect, right? So the point 0, 08 is on this parabola. Okay, so far so good. Let's make sure that the second point is also on the parabola. The point 2410. We plug in 24 for x and solve for y. What do we get? We have a y value of negative 1,491. That means that the ball is 1,491 feet under the ground. That makes no sense. That's definitely the wrong answer. Therefore, C has to be our answer, right? Let's go ahead and double check that. So for answer choice C, we'll go ahead and see if the point 0, 08 is on the trajectory. We plug in zero for X, we solve for Y and we get eight, perfect. Now we check the other point, plug in 24 for X, solve for Y. When we plug in 24, we get Y equals 10, perfect. All right, this parabola has the correct release point and it has the correct made point. Okay, so let's go on to the second part of this question. So the second part of this question is, what was LV's release angle and did he make the perfect jump shot? In the first problem, we figured out the trajectory of the, of the shot that LV made. Now we want to know, did he make the perfect shot? The perfect shot was the ball went into the basket at a 45 degree angle. So for his parabola, did it go into the basket at a 45 degree angle? Also, we're being asked for what was his release angle. So let's solve for these two angles. The angle that the ball takes is also called the slope. The slope tells you how steep an angle is. If something is only moving sideways, it's flat and it has no slope. If something is only moving upward, it's steep and it has an infinite slope. So zero degrees is a flat slope. Going straight down, that's an infinite slope. So we want something in the middle. We don't want it to be flat and we don't want it to be going straight down. We want it to be 45 degrees in the middle like this. So if we can find the slope, then we can also measure the angle because the slope has a tangential relationship with the angle. Slope of a function is also called the derivative of a function. And even if you haven't taken calculus and you don't know what a derivative is, for polynomials like quadratic equations, it's very easy to calculate the slope, okay? It's a very simple trick. What is that trick? For all the x terms, all we need to do is take the power that the x is raised to, bring it down, multiply it by a, and then decrease the power of x by one. Okay, so that's d dx of a x to the n is going to be n a times x raised to the n minus one. So you just bring the power down, multiply by a and decrease the power by one. That's all you gotta do, okay? Remember our equation was y equals negative 0 0.0756 x squared plus 1.899 x plus eight. Now we calculate the derivative of this function. For the first term, we have negative 0 0.0756 times x squared all we got to do is bring the power down. So we bring the two down, 
and you multiply two times 0 0.0756 and decrease the power by one. So instead of a two now, you raise x to the power of one. The next term is 1.899x. So x is being raised to the power of one. So you bring down the one, one times 1.899 is 1.899 and you decrease the power of x by one. So instead of x being raised to the power of one, x is now raised to the power of zero and x raised to the power of zero is equal to what? One, right? And then we have the last term, which is eight. Um, eight doesn't seem to have an x term, but it kind of does. It's just x raised to the power of zero because x raised to the power of zero equals one. So we have eight times x raised to the power of zero. Well, you bring down the zero multiplied by eight and zero times eight is zero. So that term goes away. All right, so the derivative is negative 0.15x plus 1.899, okay? And this equation will tell us the slope at every point on the curve. Now, we wanted to know what his release angle was. So what we need to do is we need to find the slope at x, zero, at x equals zero because he shot the ball at x equals zero. We plug in zero in for x and we get 1.899. So 1.899 was the slope a specific slope always corresponds to a specific angle. A slope is equal to the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. So in this case, we're being told that the rise over run, which is the slope, is equal to 1.899. The rise over the run of a right triangle is equal to the tangent of the angle. And now what we want to solve for is the angle, the angle theta, and to solve for theta, we need to take the, the inverse tangent of both sides. So when we take the inverse tangent of both sides, we get theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.899. And when you plug this into your calculator, inverse tangent of 1.899 is equal to 62 degrees. So he released the ball at an angle of 62 degrees. So that was his release angle. Now let's find the angle that the ball dived into the basket to. Okay, so the ball dived into the basket when it was 24 feet away from the jump shooter. Okay, so let's find the slope at 24 feet. At 24 feet, when we plug in 24 for x, we get negative 1.725, okay? And that makes sense, right? It should be negative because when the ball dived into the basket, the ball wasn't going up anymore. The ball, when the ball dived into the basket, the ball was going down. So the slope is going to be negative, right? So we get negative 1.725. Okay, now what angle does that correspond to? For the perfect shot, we hope that it corresponds to 45 degrees. And automatically we know that it doesn't correspond to 45 degrees because what is the slope of a 45 degree angle? Well, if you, have, if you take a look at a right triangle with 45 degrees, the rise over run has a one to one ratio, which means that the slope equals one. Does this slope equals one? No, it equals negative 1.725. That doesn't equal one. So the ball did not dive into the basket at 45 degrees. If you wanna go ahead and solve for the angle, it actually dived into the basket at 60 degrees. Okay, so it wasn't a perfect shot, but does it matter? He made the shot, right? Okay, so, so what's the answer to this question? LV, he shot the ball at 62, and the ball dived into the basket at 60. At 60. It was, so it wasn't a perfect shot, but he made the shot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned some math. You never thought that uh, the quadratic equations that you learned in algebra class actually corresponded to real life, did you? That's what I'm here to teach you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Continue to watch, continue to look out for our videos and keep supporting the channel. Uh, we're growing every day, slowly but surely. All right, so with that said, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.